The Utah Utes and UCLA Bruins begin Pac-12 play this Saturday. So what are the biggest storylines? Who's going to win the game? We're talking about on today's Locked on Utes. You are Locked on Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes and Locked On UCLA your first listen every single day. I'm JT, excited to be joined by Zach for this one. And Zach, I I think this battle between the Utes and the Bruins is going to be a really good one. A top 25 matchup, one of several top 25 matchups to begin the college football season uh, as it pertains to conference play, really, although we get a few non-conference matchups that make this one really fun. And uh, we do appreciate for all of you guys for joining us. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Uh, and thank you for making our shows your first listen every day. Also, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Jace Medical. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus injections. Get yourself today. Get yourself a case today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. So as it pertains to kind of the biggest storylines in this game, I, I Zachary, I think we have to start with will Cam Rising play? And unfortunately, the answer is still, I have no idea. And that's, we were recording this at the time of Wednesday, September 20th. And it's just one of those things. Like I, it's, you hear coaches speak, you hear reports. It's all up in the air. I think Cam, if I had to guess, I'm going to say Cam will not play. I just at the point where I've been saying for weeks, like, oh, Cam will pop up here. Cam will or won't. No. At this point, I'm not going to believe until he's out on the field. So I think there's a pretty good chance that Utah is without Cam Rising in this one. I'm curious for you as a Bruins fan, and just based on this is kind of your first time, you guys are all parachuting into this whole, like, will Cam Rising play, will he not play? What are you expecting? Are you expecting to see Cam Rising out there? Well, you know, the first few weeks of the season for UCLA was who is going to start for at quarterback, right? They had this whole debate this whole time. Utah knows who they'd like to start, right? You guys mm-hmm. know who you'd like to start. For UCLA, it was who's going to start? Now, despite Chip Kelly's noncommittal, it'll be Dante Moore. He won't say it. It'll be Dante. For rising, I think UCLA is preparing for either case. Chip Kelly has been quoted as saying, like, hey, if he's out there, we're going to prepare. You know, you just have to prepare for every situation. And probably you're going to see Johnson one way or another, whether in a big role or a limited role. And I just think you have to take every single role. And I think Dante Lynn is doing his best to prepare this defense for this atmosphere. Yeah, and it is, it's a good It's a good atmosphere. It's one of the best in the Pac-12. It's one that in the past UCLA has not fared as well traveling out to. But look, this could be a team in totality or a little bit of a difference. Like we're curious what we're going to see out of Dante Moore in his first ever road Pac-12 start in this hostile environment. That's where I'm curious. But this, I mean, just talk about how good this UCLA team is. It's interesting, right? Because they are ranked 22nd right now in the AP poll. And you look at wins against Coastal Carolina, right? 27 to 13. And who knows, maybe if it was Dante Moore earlier, that could be different because of some of the Garbers turnovers throughout that one. And then taking care of business against San Diego State, 35 to 10, 59 to 7. I think when you could compare Utah's schedule and then the UCLA schedule, you would say, okay, Utah's win against Florida and then Baylor. Those are two power five teams. Those are probably a little bit more impressive wins. So at least for me, when I was watching film, I was like, I do think this UCLA team is good, but they haven't really been tested like going into the fourth quarter or, or they, I mean, they just made it look easy in the fourth against Coastal Carolina. I mean, honestly, the punch, the turnovers, like they really shut them down at the fourth. Like, I'm just curious for you. How good do you think this UCLA team is? Well, if you think about last year's game, right, between these two teams, it's almost similar to what the storyline is coming in this year, where the two teams come in ranked, Utah's getting the love, UCLA, we don't really know, are they a dark horse, are they a good football team? Last year with more senior-laden roster with the DTR, Charbonnet, and Bobo for a year, I do think UCLA is good. Now, I, I also agree with you that, hey, the, the quality of competition is maybe not the same as beating Florida, who beat Tennessee. Maybe that's overrated if you want to go with the transitive properties there. Winning at Baylor, regardless of who is starting at quarterback for either side, is much tougher than what UCLA had to do, I believe. Going to San Diego State, even though Baylor lost to Texas State, I don't really know there. I think UCLA is good. They have talent. Mm-hmm. They've shored up some things in all sides of the football offense, special teams, defense. Now this is the test. This is like that early semester, like final midterm, Mm -hmm. right? This is like that beginning test. Where do they rank? And we'll know what the rest of the season looks like after this game. 
So Utah is going to be starting Nate Johnson more than likely, as I said, if it's Cam Rising, we trust, I trust in Cam Rising with, for what he's done throughout his college career. We know UCLA is going to be starting with Dante Moore. Let's start with uh, Nate Johnson for a second. I do believe Utah can win this game without Nate Johnson. And the biggest reason I believe Utah can win this game or win this game without Cam Rising with Nate Johnson starting. And the biggest reason is Utah's at home. If Utah had to go out to UCLA again, I'd be like, this is going to be really hard. Top 25 team on traveling to their house. Like it just didn't go well for Utah last year. And even though you mentioned some of the turnover for the Bruins, it's still a really strong roster, but it's really hard to win in Rice Eccles stadium. Utah is 28 and two now since 2018. And only one of those losses came when there were fans in the stands. The other one was to USC during the COVID period. So it's just really hard. The Utah defense has been stout at home. They've only given up 30 points at home once in the past couple seasons. And that was to the reigning Heisman trophy winner and Caleb Williams. So this defense always comes to play at home. It's not like the biggest in terms of like an sec stadium size, but the fans are loud. It's rowdy. It's the way the stadium is constructed. The noise is trapped in there too. So I do believe Utah can win with Nate Johnson starting because they don't need Nate Johnson to carry them. Utah's very good at home and they have a very good team. Zach. Yeah, we don't need 100,000-seat stadiums anymore, right? You have Otson, which is really loud. Rice Eccles is really loud. The The day is gone where we had the Bulls, like the Rose Bowl, which is iconic as it is. We're not getting the 90-seaters, 90,000-seaters anymore. So when it comes to this construction, how the stadium's designed, we're, we're going for atmosphere and noise. And Utah definitely is near the top of the list, especially in the Pac-12. And while San Diego State was supposed to be that cool atmosphere, <laughs> It just wasn't. It was sleepy Southern California. And there's just nothing that UCLA has faced to this point that'll be like going to Salt Lake City. And th there's nothing when it comes to facing a top 10, top 11, 12, whatever you want to put Utah is on the road. Doesn't matter who you start at quarterback. You can feel like the Utes fans are going to be cocky saying, hey, imagine if we win this game without rising. How scared should the rest of the Pac-12 be? I would be scared. You, If the Utes beat UCLA, I would be scared saying, hey, how did they win this game? Not that you guys can't with the defense that the Utes have, but still, it is a big statement, even more so for Utah to win this game if Rising doesn't play. Yeah, and then let's turn it over to UCLA, right? Because Dante Moore, his first ever Pac-12 start in against what I've just called, I think is one of the best home field advantages in college football, statistically speaking, currently. How do you think Moore is going to play in that atmosphere? Because I think he is a very talented quarterback, but it's just really hard, I feel like, as a true freshman in your first start to go into a place like Rice Eccles Stadium and just have this unbelievable game because of how good Morgan Scally, the Utah defense, the players on it are. I think they're going to make it really hard on Dante Moore. The one thing I will say, the last time UCLA won in Rice Eccles, it was back in, what, 2015? And they had true oh. freshman Josh Rosen starting then for UCLA. Yeah. So, hey, maybe history right. repeats itself. And UCLA then was in the thick of a Pac-12 South division title race. They didn't win it that year, but that's what they were dealing with then. So they have won with a true freshman, different regimes. You can't really pull that information to now. Dante Moore, let's dissect this. Really, really, really good. It's not going to be sophomore, junior year Dante Moore. Mm -hmm. This is a freshman who I think is very talented, really good, can be a Heisman Trophy winner. Can't not make. this year. I agree. With not, that. It's In not going to happen. I totally this year. agree with that. Mm -hmm. And I think you, there's different lists that show like who are the top six quarterback rated, the top six quarterbacks rated in the nation. And more, they said, is amongst the top six. Now it's who has he played? Have these receivers been wide, wide open? There have been some great passes more has thrown. But if you get pressure on him, while ESPN has written about him being one of the best at staying in the pocket and facing pressure preseason-wise in terms of two freshman QBs, it's different when you face that on the road. And people, if you're in the comments, probably be like, stop talking about road atmosphere. That is a factor. And when you have to communicate to your offensive line, make mm -hmm. sure there's no holes and free runners coming at you, it's different when, hey, even if Utah's DBs aren't as strong, say from one year to the next, that pressure, that noise, even as good as Moore can throw the football that's just a different scenario that he has not faced this year. I think he can handle it. Mm -hmm. I think it might be more of a game manager-like scenario where they need to run the football to win this game. Yeah, and I totally agree with you on more future-wise. Like, obviously, this year we know Caleb Williams, all the guys, and you said the same thing. But, like, if we're talking about the 2025 Heisman or maybe even next year, the flashes I've seen from Dante Moore, say, I say, okay, when he puts it all together – that's where he could be really special. He hasn't done that quite yet, but this could be the first game in what could end up being a very legendary career for Dante Moore if he was able to go into Rice Eccles and be the first team to really knock them off at a, at a true home game since 2018. That's the kind of stuff 
legends are made of. And also just really quick on the road thing. It absolutely matters in college football playing at home or on the road. I mean, we just saw Florida look abysmal at Utah offensively. And then they go in and they win because they're in part because they're home and they beat Tennessee, a top 15 team. It's happens all the time in college football. Think about Utah last year. They were able to beat USC at home. They lose at UCLA at Oregon and at Florida. It's very tough to win on the road in college football. Now you can do it definitely. And the Bruins will definitely have a chance against Utah. And that's what we're going to be talking about. The keys to this matchup in the second segment. But first we want to talk to you guys a little bit more about our friends at Chase medical. Everyone should be empowered to create for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to the medication in emergency, but you know you're always prepared. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation, the licensed pharmacy medication delivery, and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical. Plus an additional $20 off by using the code Locked On. It's all caps, no spaces, Locked On at checkout uh, at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E-M medical.com, promo code Locked On. Also want to talk to you guys about something fun and exciting we have going on at the Locked On College Network. It's college football kickoff live each Friday. Every Locked On channel will go live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. You can find the link for Locked On College Football kickoff live right here at Locked On UCLA. Same thing with Locked On Utes. Our feed, they will carry those. Lots of great stuff. I'm sure they'll be hitting on this great game too. We might even be making an appearance on it as well for a segment or so. So make sure you guys keep your eye on that. And once again, tune in for the biggest story and just in games and college football previewed on Locked On College Football Live kickoff. All right, Zach, coming to this one. Talk about the keys for the game. What to you is a is the key for a UCLA win? I think for UCLA, if they're rushing the ball closer to 200 yards, then that will be a big key. I know we want to talk about the arm of Dante Moore, but it comes down to being able to run the football and not turning over the football. We have the crazy streak that the Utes are on in terms of years and seasons in a row. They've returned an interception for a touchdown. They've thrived on turning defensive interception, defensive plays into scores. Mm -hmm. The fact that if Dante Moore can limit that, right, he doesn't have to throw for 500 yards to win this game and five touchdowns. That's not what he needs to do. UCLA honestly doesn't have to score that many points to win this game in my mind that we're, we're assuming I don't, that rising all sides. I agree. I don't think you, that, you don't need a 35 point performance. No. Spectacular offensive performance is UCLA just needs to outscore what Utah can provide with or without rising. Cause even if rising starts, it's still how sharp is he going to be? How healthy is he going to be? How ready is he going to be even as great as he is? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's can UCLA avoid the big turnover? UCLA, you know, if you give a turnover on the road, it's different than just coughing one up to NC Central or San Diego State on the one-yard line. I think Utah's going to punch it in from first and goal from the one, unlike the Aztecs can. So avoiding the turnover and run the football closer to 200 yards. You don't need Zach Charbonnet, but they've got two beast backs, TJ Harden and Carson Steele, leading this game to be decided by UCLA's O-line versus Utah's D-line. That is a key matchup that can determine the success for either team in this game. It is a key matchup and it's exact. I have the exact, like the same keys basically, because if you are Utah, I want Dante more in a lot of third and long situations. I want Dante more to feel pressured to make the play for his team in this rowdy environment, to be the step up, to be the hero, to force the ball that he should not throw, but being a young and inexperienced quarterback, he's desperate to try and make that play. That is what Utah should try to do. Now I will, that's what they should try to do. Moore is also capable of making that throw in play. So they need to make sure they have it covered up. But whenever you are dealing with a freshman quarterback, especially just in a hostile environment, they are prone to make more mistakes in my opinion so that's the key for utah defensively is to stop the run of the bruins and put the game more in Moore's hands as much as you can then turning it over to the other side for the utah offense I, I think it's the same thing i mean utah cannot get in a lot of third long nate johnson has sh showed promise against weaver state right through for a, over 190 yards in that one looked poised operating the offense but it's a different level when you're talking about this Bruins defense. And I do think it's a good defense too. So I think Utah has to establish the run if they want to have success. And Nate Johnson's very capable of doing that. He is, I, I think he might be the fastest player on this team. I think he clocked 22 miles per hour on a treadmill. They got, they got him on recently. So he has crazy speed. He's burned SEC defenses before too. And I think he's going to have a chance to make some plays against this UCLA team. So I have very similar in terms of how I see these matchups for you, but uh, let's go back to the other one. 
I do like Utah's Utah's front seven in their matchup against the UCLA offensive line. It's a very experienced Utah defensive line. I think when you're talking about elite guys like Junior Tafuna, who have been mainstays on all conference teams as well, and you get a pass rush with a couple players emerging, especially with the blitzes that Morgan Scali is going to dial up. I believe in that ability to make pressure. And you mentioned guys getting pick sixes. It was Lander Barton last week. I think he's really starting to come into his own. Karene Reed's been on this team for a long time. Leavani Dumuni transferring over from Stanford. I think he's been really sharp as well. So I do like Utah's advantage there. I think it's a very back and forth battle. UCLA will win one. Utah will win one. But in the end, I think after the game, in my opinion, we'll look back and say Utah had the advantage as the game is played out. How do you see that matchup going back and forth? The one thing is maybe Utah wins that matchup more often than not, but it's the one mistake that goes for a 70 yard touchdown that can help define the game, right? It, UCLA has had one of the most, uh, what, what's the way to phrase this? Some of the most scoring plays from outside the red zone, right? Most of their touchdowns score from outside the red zone, I think, amongst the country. I think SC is on the list, whatever it may be. So the Bruins have been big play ready this season. So if it is third and long, but it's one missed one missed assignment, more escapes out of the pocket, hits J. Michael Sturdivant down the sideline, then okay, Utah wins that 60-40, but the Bruins will take that score in one play and take the points they can get against this Utah defense. So it's the matter of how much will big plays play in a role, even if Utah is somewhat winning this line of scrimmage, stifling the run, that's where the Dante Moore factor can come in. Can he make magic with his legs? Because he is mobile, not maybe to run it necessarily, but to weave behind in the pocket and then throw it deep down the field to a J. Michael Sturdivant or some of these receiving core that the Bruins will have to face the youth secondary. And I do think that is an interesting matchup as well because UCLA does have very good receivers. Utah defensive backs have been very good this season, but in each game, I can show you an instance where there's a 50-50 ball, and I, sh- I should say a ga- an instance in the first two games, obviously not against Weber State, but if you're looking against Baylor and against Florida, where their receivers did go up and win one of those balls and make a big play. So that is the question for Utah is, look, you're going to get beat. You're going to give up. I'm not expecting Utah to never give up a pass over 20 yards in this game. It's going to happen. But the question is, can you limit how much that happens? You're, you, the Bruins are going to move the ball. They're going to have success. Utah has held every opponent under 14 points so far. I do not expect that to stay here. I think UCLA will have success. I think Utah has a chance to hold them under 20. Just like the UCLA defense is going to have a chance to hold Utah out of 20, just because it's what we've seen out of these offense so far. They've been productive, but we want to see them both do it against top. We haven't seen them get a win against currently, like at the time they played them top 20 teams, right? Because at the time Utah played Baylor, as much as I think Baylor, winning on and the road at Baylor was tough, right? Not a top 20 team. It's the same thing with Florida because that was Florida looked like a totally different team against Tennessee. <laughs> we saw the difference from week one to week three. So, well, apparently, Florida in the swamp against Tennessee is like the best team in the country. Know, you know, yeah, they, with that crazy thing. streak, yeah, yeah that, that <laughs> they don't win the swamp. They haven't won since like oh three. That does, they just don't win the swamp. I don't understand that, but it just that's not the case. Yeah, they under, they unlock like true like Florida man levels of unstoppable. Like that's really what it becomes when they play in the swamp. Tim they, Tebow comes back and he's yeah, running, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I do think that is. I look at it and I'm like, okay. I do think that Dante Moore and these receivers, if you're telling me Utah lost the game, I'm guessing Moore had a pretty good game. I'm guessing he might have thrown for two touchdowns and that Utah defensive backs did get beat at times. I, that's just the way I, I could see that going out. And I think if we're looking at the other side, if you're telling me that uh, Utah didn't have success, I'm guessing Nate Johnson probably had two interceptions in the game. That's how if I'm looking at it from a negative standpoint, I would go. For you, how would you look at it for UCLA? You're like, okay, this is if you, UCLA were to lose the game, this is probably what happened. If UCLA was unable to win the game, it probably comes down to the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football being dominated by Utah. Moore, if he's not given any time to throw, regardless of how good he is, despite how confident and poised he might be facing pressure, you know, it's a little different. He hasn't faced as much pressure, say, as Shadir Sanders in Colorado, right? One of the best quarterbacks apparently under pressure with those crazy stats over there. But Moore just hasn't faced it as much. And even when he came back in the game against NC Central, after sitting out a couple of series, he still got popped by an Eagle defender. And that's a team that the Bruins dominated. And they still couldn't necessarily keep the Eagle defense away from hitting more in the mouth in the game. They're well out in front. So for UCLA, it's make sure more has enough time to throw. I'm not sure what that time amount is, but just don't make sure he's getting popped in the face, popped in the mouth, not getting pressure every single play. And the strength of the UCLA defense is their D line. If they yeah. get bullied, Lots I'm very nice. worried. He's nice. I don't think <laughs> I don't think that necessarily will happen. At least not consistently throughout the game. Mm-hmm. But if they are getting bullied and Utah can just run the ball 
milk the clock as much as Chip. What did Chip Kelly say? I hope you enjoy your commercials throughout the game because it might be so short. For Utah, they probably shorten this game. They can win this by a score, but it will be an ugly Utah win, and that's the best statement that can be. An ugly Utah win is probably a recipe for a UCLA loss. Yeah, and I think Utah Utah definitely likes to make it that way. This is not a Utah. I don't expect Utah to score. They scored 31 last week. I just I don't see how they're going to score more than that. Even in, if Nate was to start again, you're like, oh, second start. But it's like it's such a leap in competition with this UCLA defense. And Utah is starting a true freshman still at left tackle. So I am curious to see how the Bruins attack that because lot you mentioned like lot two is the team that's got some really good pass rushers as well. But and I am curious to see because especially against Coastal Carolina, they did have some success through the air and Coastal had success sustain, sustaining drives too. UCLA allowed Coastal to have six drives over nine plays in that game, including one that went 16 overall play so i think that'll be interesting to see if utah can have that success maintaining drives and i think there's opportunities for guys to make plays on the outside but i do think the ucla dbs will also be able to make plays on what's still a pretty inexperienced starting quarterback if it is nate johnson and he gets the start so there's a lot of fascinating angles for this game to break down and we're going to predict who we think is going to win it and as well as a couple of more exactly predictions we think is just going to play out over the course of the game in one moment but of course we want to give you guys a chance to win on this game too. And that's why we want to talk to you guys about our friends at FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL and college football season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options. The spread, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So make sure you guys visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Zach, we're going to give our score predictions in a second, but first I want to know, Utah is favored by four and a half. I believe Utah will cover. I think they're going to get it done. I think Utah is going to win by more than five. How do you see it? I think uh, it's actually UCLA who you know gets gets in covers over there. I, I think the game will be even if UCLA loses closer than, than than the line of four and a half. Or in my case, we'll tell you the score in a minute. Maybe something might frustrate Utes fans. <laughs> well, let's hear what it is then. Tell me your predictions. How you think this game's going to play out, and then who's going to win? For me, we haven't really talked about two of the bigger things. One, for UCLA's defense, they've been opportunistic forcing turnovers. They have at least six interceptions, a couple of fumble recoveries. They forced three fumbles, 12 sacks. Latsu leads the charge. It's the D-line that has the majority of the 28 tackles for loss. It'll need to be something similar. They've already faced a heavy rushing attack when it came in terms of facing the Week 2 opponent, San Diego State. So they know what it's like to face a dual threat. Now I know Johnson's very athletic, might throw a little bit better of a ball than San Diego State's quarterback because he's that really a quarterback. He was a converted safety and a lefty, whatever it may be. The atmosphere will play a factor, but it's the defense. Can they force two turnovers? I think if Johnson's playing, I think the UCLA defense gets a couple of picks and UCLA wins 24-14. Not a game that UCLA dominates. It's one of those that it's ugly, close, close, and it's one of those late picks that the Bruins go forward. That's if Johnson doesn't play. The other key we haven't talked about is what has Kyle Whittingham been saying all week long? Right? What has the coach been saying? 15, 16 guys out. I'm not going to go any deeper than that, but it's beyond just rising and Keithy. It's, oh, your starting center or your receivers who missed the last couple of games, whether they have a boot on their foot right now. There's a long list of key contributors for Utah on every side, every facet of the game, offense, defense, special teams, that makes this a great opportunity Almost turning, not that UCLA should win this game on the road, but it'd be severely disappointing to come away with an opportunity like this with depending on how banged up the Utes are going in this game. UCLA has a grand opportunity to win this. With Rising, I think UCLA wins 24-21. Now, that might be blasphemy for some people. I don't think so. I, I, I think that's you can a look at the point. history of, and I'll even just say this, like supporting your point, you can look at the history of quarterbacks coming back from their first game from a major injury like Cam suffered. They never play their best game. So I definitely think even if Cam is in this game, UCLA can absolutely win it. Yeah. And just, our, oh, yeah. Injuries up and down the line everywhere. I just yeah. think UCLA has an opportunity. Now, if they don't, I would be very disappointed as a Bruins fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and this is the really interesting part, right? Cause Kyle has been talking a lot about those injuries and because he is Kyle Whittingham and he's a college football coach. So all college footballs like to keep these things close to the vest. I have no idea how many of those guys are going to play or are not going to play. I think it's fair to expect of those 16 guys out. I think it's fair to expect probably at least eight of them are probably not going to play in this game. We know there's been a couple season ending injuries already that Utah's announced. And that's where it's just tough to know and predict who's going to be there. But especially if Utah is 
somehow like out like 12 plus guys, I think that could really bode that will not bode well for Utah against a top 25 team in this one, especially if one of them is cam rising. And as I mentioned, I don't expect cam rising to play in this game, but I do expect Utah to win this game because once again, I think the Utah defense is really going to step up. And Nate Johnson did nearly turn the ball over a couple times this week. He might even have one in this game too. But I think Dante Moore, this is the game where we see that he is a true freshman. As good as I think he's going to be, I think he struggles a little bit in this one. I think he throws a couple interceptions. I think the Utes do a good job of stepping up and stopping the Bruins rushing attack. So he is putting some of those third and longs, has a couple incompletions. And I think Utah gets just enough out of the offense in this one. And I do think they're able to establish the run a little bit as well as make a couple of plays downfield. Both sides, I do think, are going to be putting a decent amount. We, we need Either one of us is picking this game to be over like either side to score over 30 points in this one. I think it's going to be a defensive battle. Could be a quick battle. Also in your point, if one team gets the rushing game going, because then the clock is really just going to wind and drain down. But I, I do think we see Jaquindon Jackson for Utah on the ground. I think we'll see him make a couple plays. He did get banged up though. So even him, I'm like Jaquindon Jalen Glover. I don't even know which one's going to be out there, but I, I think Utah offensive line wise, will do a good enough job of opening rushing lanes where those guys will have success. I think Nate makes a, makes a couple of really good plays with his legs. I think Nate will actually lead Utah in rushing yards in this one overall. And I think the Utah defense, as I mentioned, I think they're going to step up, make some plays. They might even give up some yards, but I think they stand tall in the red zone and force the Bruins into some, either we'll go for it on fourth down or have to settle for field goals because I do just respect the level this Utah defense is playing at right now. And I think it's going to be a great fight between the Utes and the Bruins, but I am going to take Utah on this one. I'm going to take Utah 27 to 17 to win, even without Cam rising. And if Cam were to play, I, I do think there's a chance that Utah maybe gets a little more than that. But I, like I said, that's where it's just hard to tell. But either way, Zach, I think it's going to be a great game. And it's always fun doing these crossovers with you, man. Yeah, it's weird. You could sit there, whether you're locked on UCLA fan or locked on Utes fan, you can maybe throw out the Homer part in there too. Oh. But it's funny because I could realistically think with either one of our points, like this game could play out verbatim as you said or as I said. It's one of those 100%. games where it's not – wild to see any of these no. ways the game can play out it literally can go one way or the other and it's just a matter of who executes on the certain play and that's what is a, it usually comes down to in college football too to your point execution especially against pac-12 opponents that know each other so well it's a bummer this is the last time the utes and ucla bruins are going to be playing at least for a little bit zach hopefully maybe they'll schedule something down the road non-conference who knows it's college football everything's crazy but that is going to do it for us at locked on use and locked on ucla make sure you guys check back in with both of our shows on friday as well have more content coming out for you to get you ready for this top 25 matchup zach i can't wait thanks for joining us thanks go bruins and go Utes. We'll see you guys on Friday.